right there YouTube welcome back to the channel I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off this morning so I didn't get a chance to film a proper introduction to this video but we are on the road here and we are heading to go pick up a new equipment purchase I'm guessing by the thumbnail there I'm guessing you already know what it is but we're gonna go pick up a flatbed trailer and haul it back to the shop here all right, so we are hooked up here. We're on our way back to the shop. Driving on down the highway. excuse how dirty old red is here it's been raining I haven't had a chance to wash it yet it was raining this morning but here's the trailer it's a little ugly but it's nice heavy-duty well-built trailer triple axle really looking for a trailer with a beaver tail and ramps on it but this one does not haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do there. This is set up for pen on ramps, but I think I'd rather have a beaver tail. Might do that. Might. This one here has got a little bit of weather checking. It's going to need to be changed. And I think the inside one on the other side there as well. Underneath here we've got some new slack adjusters. It's got all new airbags on it. They replaced some of the airlines. It's got new brake cans on it. Brake shoes still plenty serviceable, probably about half life. No need to change those quite yet. S cams and bushings are all tight. All oh, that's pretty good. Oh. This is an extendable deck trailer. You can see it's got different pinholes here. It's very heavy duty. This is probably close to an inch thick steel here. You got an air valve here. Switch that, pulls the pins out, set the brakes on the trailer. And then the front half and the back half of the trailer will either slide together or slide away. You guys got a deck here that he made to fill the gap at the 50 foot setting. Seems fairly well built. I don't really like how it's attached. We're probably gonna probably gonna use this deck, but I'm gonna change how it's attached. Probably also going to fill the gap in there in the middle and replace the wood in the center here so I have a full width flat deck. Wood up front here is pretty solid yet. There is one hole right there, but other than that, the deck's pretty solid. Same thing up top here. Also set up, set up for pin-on ramps to go up to the upper deck here too. I do believe this was a winch truck trailer at one time. You can see the uh, front there. Looks like it's set up to hook a winch to it, drag it up on the trailer. And on the back here, this is, there's no tail roll on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had a tail roll on it at one time, because this is like three quarter inch thick steel on the back here so very very beefy came with a few good used tires here so we'll take them it's got 22.5 bud wheels on it you can see the uh, square here it means that this is a 
lug centered bud wheel and we're running 255 75 or 70 r 225s and it looks like we've got a deck height of three foot one inch so at the current setting we're at 40 feet on the bottom deck with a 12 foot upper deck so that currently puts this trailer at 52 feet all right so i got about half a day today i can work on this and I want to try to make this trailer as functional for me as I possibly can in the least amount of time. So as you can see, this ramp is set up, or this trailer is rather is set up for pin-on ramps. I just picked up a set of pin-on ramps here. We're going to put those on, see what our angles kind of look like. Hopefully that's going to work out for now. Quite honestly, here probably in a week or two, I'm going to need to move that fuel truck that you saw in the last video or a recent video so I kind of want to get this trailer set up so I can do that if I've got a trailer I don't want to borrow one so let's go ahead and get these thrown on here and see what it looks like Alright, so I had to take a grinder to these frickin' things to get them to fit in these ramps, but... Okay, so there's that on there. I can tell you right now this is not going to be a permanent solution for one thing. These are a serious pain in the ass. For another, it's not a great loading angle. Thought I'd see maybe if this Duramax here will drive up that. If that truck with its ground clearance can make it over that, I think we'll be okay. I can only find a hill to back into when I gotta load stuff, but not a permanent solution. These will probably mostly be used to put up, drive stuff up to the top deck once I get my beaver tail and stuff built back here. But see what it looks like if we try to drive up there. Now you see that there is the problem. We bought them out before the rear tires are start climbing. Now if I were to back this into a hillside here, get the ramps flatter, that would work, but not ideal. So to try to illustrate that point here, I got my little Toyota here. It's much shorter wheelbase, higher ground clearance obviously, but I think that you see that 
it's not going to drop near as much in the center because the rear tires are going to start climbing sooner. All right, so next on the agenda here is I want to get some deck boards in the middle here. Picked up a hundred dollars worth in two by sixes. This is not ideal tra trailer decking. This is just pressure treated two by six lumber. This is not the best trailer decking material, but it will work. That's what the deck on this trailer is made out of here actually, except this wasn't even pressure treated. I just mopped it with engine oil and this deck's Oh, probably going on seven, eight years old now, and it's still in pretty good shape, so I think we're make do. First thing I need to do here is where we've got some, the old screws that are broke off that are sticking up, we need to grind those down flat so the boards can sit flat on these cross members. So let me knock that out here quick. So, you know, there's some days you guys really got a question. Are you very smart? Yeah, today's one of those days. So I threw my camera on the charger and I was just kind of working away at this. I haven't been at this for very long, and maybe 45 minutes into it. It's going pretty darn quick, so. I knew when I measured the width of this section I had to fill in here. Figured I'd use a two by six, so I took that width divided by 5.5. I came up with five and a fraction. So I knew, okay, well, I'm gonna have to get six boards and I'm gonna have to rip the last one down, make it fit. So I got my five boards down here. I grabbed my tape measure. Well, how wide do I need to make this? Hmm. Okay, so I should have got five two by sixes and one two by four. Imagine that. Well, I'm not going to take the time to go run back and get a two by four, so we're going to go ahead and rip this last board down anyway.
All right, so that's that. That's probably about all I'm gonna have time for here today. Uh, I need to get everything picked up here and cleaned up. Probably go ahead and pull these ramps back off. Probably stick them up on the top deck there and chain them down. Still need to get a piece of diamond tread to go in here. All right, there YouTube. Here we are, another day, another two cents. Back on working on the old trailer here. I really didn't think I was going to get this done this soon, but fortunately enough, we're able to. So, I think you guys can see what we're doing here. We're starting to build a beaver tail on this trailer. I've got main outside box of it done here. I've got one of the center beams cut and just tack welded in place here. And uh, we're going to keep plugging away on this. And I'll bring you guys along for some of this here, but I think uh, first thing, using my neighbor's bandsaw to cut the final angles and dimensions on these, I'm going to go ahead and get the other one of these set up in the bandsaw there. Get that started cutting, and then I'll start welding this one in. All right, so once I got my angle figured out here, I'll be able to set the fence up here so it's nice and repeatable, quick, easy done deal this first cut not too critical here I mean obviously the angle is critical but where I place it here is not too critical I had the steel shop cut these a little long so I mean I got a pretty good drop off the end so go ahead and get this saw started up get this thing started cutting I think this blades a little dull so it takes a while but get this started and then uh, get back over to the trailer Yeah, that's not too shabby. Got that one to do. We are going to preheat the back of the trailer there because that's like three quarter inch thick steel there. All right, so we got this one positioned and tacked in place. We're gonna get the bandsaw set up to cut our next pieces. Start cutting up while we weld that in, just like we did a minute ago. All right, now I don't remember exactly where I left off on recording on this. I know I had a time lapse going, or I thought I did, and when I went to turn the camera off, I had never realized I had never turned it on in the first place. So. Here's where I was at when I had to take off here yesterday to take care of some other things. I've got all the structure in. I've got some triangulation underneath. Help make this from being quite such a lever. I've got both sides of all my angle iron cut and placed. It really took far longer than I really anticipated. Kind of put me behind here. I was really kind of hoping to have all my fabrication done on this yesterday. But the majority of these are just tack welded in right now. I still got to cut the rest of the center. I'm probably not going to worry about placing them right now just because I'm getting behind. But I need to, I'll go ahead and get those cut out while I'm welding the rest of this in. I ran out of gas for the welder while I was tacking these. So we're down to stick welding here now. So we're going to stick weld 
pretty much the rest of this. I might do some flux core on some out of position stuff here, but all these angle irons, I'm just going to stick weld them in, so let's get after it. Yep, and now we have a rain delay. Making good progress, so we got both the sides, all the angle irons are completely welded in, working our way up the middle. Okay, so the deck is finished here. That was a heck of a lot of welding. It took a few hours. So next thing I need to do here is I need to make something I can set these ramps onto. And I think this is what I'm going to do here. Basically just like a uh, rub rail, except I'm going to center these here and here, and then set this one down a little bit, and then that's going to weld onto the back. I'm just going to use a, this dovetail here as a welding table to weld this. Seems how it's already grounded. That's perfect there. See, the, rather than screwing on with that pin on stuff, yeah, it just sits right on there. That ain't going nowhere.
So I got all my lights installed except for the corners. I want to wait till I get the wiring run before I go ahead and cap the ends of that and put my corner lights in. I know the sun's in the way wrong direction, probably washing you guys out here, but there is a plug on the back of the trailer here. So my plan here is to take the old light pigtail from old red and we're going to plug that in there, run it into here and wire up the light. Okay, so the lights are all wired and working. It's kind of foolish to think that plug would actually work, but it didn't take a whole lot of tinkering, got everything working. Okay, so I am done fabricating on this beaver tail. I got my center section of tread plate in here, and I made a hanger for chains. Just so much easier to grab chains when they're hanging. You can grab both ends at once, pull it right out, they don't get all tangled and stuff. I am going to put a chain box on this thing eventually, but that's a whole lot better than nothing for now. Got the old mat hooked up. Going to go park this thing back in the yard. I got to get everything from underneath here cleaned up yet tonight. But I'll tell you, I'm quite whooped. It's been a, been a pretty good sized project here getting this done. All right there, YouTube. So today, we're going to do something not the right way but we're just gonna get a little bit of paint on this beaver tail get it some temporary cover just keep this thing from totally rusting now in reality what you'd really want to do is actually sandblast all this new metal get all the mill scale and stuff off of it before you painted it because otherwise what's going to happen is the mill scale is going to pop off underneath the paint and the paint's going to come off now, I need to paint this entire trailer. We're already getting into October here. There's not gonna be much weather remaining that's gonna be able to let me do this. So I just wanna get something squirted on it here so that they get some cover for this winter. Basically, I've already just wiped this down with the uh, solvent, get any oil off of it. I'm gonna run over it real quick. With the wire wheel, just pop off any loose mill scale, surface rust and uh, then we're going to squirt some primer and paint on it. All right, so I got two coats of primer, two coats of paint back here. Got my lights popped back in. I had a little bit of paint left over, so I went ahead and just popped the lights out on the sides here. Ran the wire wheel down that real quick. Shot a little paint down there. And you know what, that looks so much better. I think I'm gonna go full Ritchie Brothers on this thing. I gotta go grab some conspicuous e tape anyway. I'm just gonna go ahead and wire wheel this frame rail both sides real quick grab another quart of paint and just fucking shoot it it is what it is it's probably not going to last very long but it's going to look a heck of a lot better for now all right so this is what i've been using for paint and primer Use some of this Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Going with gloss black. Thin it with some mineral spirit so it shoots out of the gun a little bit better. I don't do anything exact or precise, just 
thin it by about a third or mix that up get to shooting So I'm going to say that's done. Who knows how long that paint job will hold up. The prep was pretty suspect on it. But you know what? Looks a hell of a lot better than it did. And I really didn't spend very much time on it. Even if a guy had to redo that every few years, that wouldn't be so bad. But got our conspicuousy tape on it. I should have put this underneath the rub rail where it's not going to get all chewed up. Same thing there, but you know, whatever. I did one side like that to start with, not thinking about it, so I just did the rest of it like that. The rest of the trailer here, put all underneath. It doesn't look fantastic, it doesn't look awful. Sure, a lot better than what it did. All right, now to show how much of a difference this beaver tail makes, got the truck in the same spot, or the trailer rather, in the same spot. We're going to try to drive this pickup up on here again. Now, if you guys remember, this pickup would not go on this trailer before we put this beaver tail on here with that same set of ramps. There you go, easy peasy, right up on. No dragging, no scraping. If you guys remember right, we hit right in here, right on the back corner of the trailer before, and she just went right up.
All right, so every single grease fitting took grease, which is nice. Just got to stick all 12 of these tires here real quick. Put a little more air in that one. Much better. So every single tire on this trailer was between 75 and 80 PSI. Got them all set at 105 here now. Honestly, he was probably running it about that pressure on purpose. Uh, what he, the last guy was hauling with this trailer was pretty light loads. He needed the deck space more than the weight capacity. But, and what I'm gonna be hauling today isn't anywhere near the weight capacity of this trailer either, but I'm not gonna sit there and change air pressures every time I haul something different. So got them all set at 105 now. The oil and all the hubs, we're good. I think we're ready to hit the road here. Yeah, this thing actually does pull pretty nice. Pulls nice and straight down the road. Rides good. You can definitely tell it's a little bit heavy for an empty flatbed, but it's an empty trailer, so yeah. Drilled right along back there. So it's a couple hours later and we're pulling up to where we got a load here. All right, so we are all loaded up, chained down, ready to hit the road. actually pulls quite nice going down the road yeah, between 65 and 70 miles an hour yeah no complaints at all all right so we're about an hour down the road here now just gonna stop 
give all of our chains and binders a check here. Make sure everything's still tight. Chains check, bladders drained, ready to hit the road. This old farmstead here at the bottom of the hill here was for sale. I would love to have this piece of land right here. Seems how it's pretty easy to see here. Thought I'd show you guys real quick how you can take one chain and make two points of securement. So this chain comes off the trailer here, comes around the axle, hooks back to itself with one binder. You got a slack piece of chain in the middle, and then you got the same thing on this side. So by law, this is two chains, even though it's only one chain. Go ahead and get all this stuff unchained and get the trailer unloaded. Another thing you can do is as you take your chains and binders off, just hang them on your rub wear rail. If you throw them on the ground you gotta bend back over to pick them up. So just hang them up. Alright, so that's all unloaded. That actually worked really well. Being the cheapest step deck I could find on Facebook Marketplace, there was one other one that was the same price, and that one had major frame issues on it. This one was at least mechanically road ready, so I think I did pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how the trailer worked. Pulled really nice. Hauled both of my trucks home from the job site, and ready to go for the next time and all ready to go for the next time I need it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a great day.